Father, thank you. Arus kalabra haske de balako jade ba subre etiash. Mento salajanas kubra akada balando jade ba hashade ba. Lift your voice. Make sure you are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Now, December, thank you. You have done all things well. Are there grateful people in this place? Jesus, we bless you. For your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight to say thank you. We are gathered tonight to declare that we love you. We are gathered tonight to enthrone Jesus. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done. For the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify. One more time, everyone. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. Jesus, we declare that you are greatly to be praised. We do not take for granted your mercy, your grace. We do not take for granted the testimonies, the transformation, salvation, revival. We do not take for granted your walkings in and through our lives this year. Father, we have come as people deeply grateful. We honor you. We recognize your grace and your mercy and your majesty. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. From the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same, we declare, let the nations praise you. And we join the people, so God, to praise you and to declare that forever you are God. You have done all things well, and to Jesus be all the praise. Amen and amen. Please walk to two or three people, celebrate them from the depth of your heart, tell them something nice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mena yi da kasoni haka. Mena yi. Are there grateful people? Mena yi da kasoni haka. Haven't they happy godia? Please. 
Please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Psalm 50 verse 5, the last function before we get to the word tonight. The Bible says, Gather unto me my sayings, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, it's a culture in this ministry that um, at the closing of the meeting, we provide an opportunity and we challenge people um, to sow with understanding into the ministry. Uh, there's always an end of year sacrifice, not necessarily today, all through within the time of the break, as God would lay it in the hands of people. We believe in giving, but we believe in giving that is done from a standpoint of love, non-manipulative giving. And um, the Bible allows believers to be part of kingdom advance, and so this is, is very, very important. Um, so we'll give this opportunity again, um, not necessarily today, but all through within the time of the break into January. It's a culture as a ministry. We call on all who have been blessed and um, lifted and changed, transformed through this ministry to be part of this as God grants them the grace. Um, all sacrifices and all seeds um, will be collected in our central account. There's no proxy, there's no giving to people. I'm saying this in advance because usually when announcements are made like this, you will have all these funny people begin to arise. Um, the accounts should be displayed and will be displayed. And you can have it down and as God grants you the grace, you can sit as a family, as individuals and trust God to just minister to you what you will give. Now this is very important. Please listen very carefully. Um, the end of year sacrifice seeks to do three things. Number one, it is, it is your expression of thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving in recognition um, of all the things that God has done in our lives. God has been merciful. Many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs. And so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith, believing God for that which you would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom. When people sow seeds, when they commit resources and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um, you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but I believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non-manipulative non-manipulative Giving from the standpoint of manipulation, I tell you, is a waste of time because there is no reward for you. Praise the Lord. Giving under threat to give, otherwise this it's it's not it's not manip it's a manipulative kind of giving. There's no blessing. The Bible says, "If there be first a willing heart, a willing mind." Are we together? So it is important by God's grace, we are people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry. All of the blessings of God you see upon my life and upon our lives have come as products 
of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and, um, and with honor. And this is what you see. If there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of God upon our lives, it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of God that makes for that possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, um, we are challenging and calling on everyone, businesses, individuals, our friends, partners, sons, daughters, ministries, um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace, um, do well to support, do well to give. Please understand that what you are doing is not a donation. What you are doing is a connection with understanding. Um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. And we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed, lifted, touched, transformed, saved, healed in and through this ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of Kingdom Advance. We are grateful for the participation of the saints. And Lord, we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws, may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of Jesus. Every seed that is sown in honor to this, um, this announcement, I pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver. May the Lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what God is doing. And may we all go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Are you ready for the word? Just a brief admonishment. Acts chapter 2. Well, thank you Jesus. Acts chapter 2. we we'll start from verse 36. The Lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really, really bless you. It's an admonishment, but it will bless us. Acts chapter 2 from verse 36. This, this, is, this is Apostle Peter um, at the upper room. Now this is the first official salvation message after the Holy Ghost came. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, please follow carefully, know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter is responding now, 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 39 is where my message is coming from. For the promise, let's read together. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. One more time. Uh huh. Even as the Lord. This is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message. And Peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of God this included is not for certain individuals he says the promise is unto you number two unto your children number three unto all those who are far off was talking about the gentile nation now then he says as many as our Lord shall call. 
very powerful very very powerful revelation the promise is for all not for few the promise not for men of god the promise not for americans not for british people not for africans this is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom are we together now the proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication the promise please keep that scripture for us is first for you everybody says for me then for your children and then to all that are far off even as many as the lord will call second scripture acts chapter 10 please we'll start from verse 34 to 35 i'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of god's operation when it has to do with the saints that there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the christ regardless of background regardless of sentiments that when we come to christ there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom acts chapter 10 we we'll start from verse 34 now peter this was after the holy ghost fell upon the gentile nation are we still together say amen then peter opened his mouth and said of a truth I perceive that God is what? No respecter of persons. In other words, there is no favoritism as it were with him. Next verse. But in every nation, Africa, hear this, in every nation, including Africa, in every nation, including Nigeria, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. That means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all. Please understand this that in the economy of god there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual not on spiritual grounds not on grounds of career not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that there is no such thing with god the reality of the christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by god this is a revelation as we end the year it's 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 a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others two more scriptures romans chapter 10 and verse 12. romans chapter 10 and verse 12. the bible says apostle paul now is teaching for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord everyone please read with me the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him the same lord rich unto an american like he is unto an african reach unto the south as he is unto the north as he is unto the east are we together now i'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny please listen to me in christ everyone's destiny in christ depends on their knowing god and they are activating the truths of the kingdom there is nobody who excels by default there is nobody who succeeds by default when it has to do with dealings the dealings of men with god there is a level playing ground for everyone the last scripture hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. you know we come from all kinds of families and some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological contexts into believing that we are disadvantaged listen to me very carefully you may never understand how destructive that understanding is 
that you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe God can speak to them directly. There are people who never believe that they can know God on their own. There are people who never believe that they can experience the power of God and the grace of God. There are people who never believe they can prosper in this life. No. We have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives. I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds, and this is one of such teachings. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Everybody say boldly. Unto the throne of grace. Let us, not let some, everyone, come boldly to the throne of grace that we, as a corporate body, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ. In fact, including sinners. So the Bible says, let us all come to that throne of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? These four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of God's dealings with men. In God's economy, there are no superiors to others by default. Follow me closely. There are no favorites as it were. The same Lord is rich unto all. The Bible talks in the book of Jude, I think, of what he called the common salvation. Common salvation. There's no special blood that speaks for Joshua Selman or speaks for the, the, uh, what the, the president of any nation. No, it is the same blood that was shed for everyone. Are we together now? Yes. There is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in Christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority. In fact, this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness. He defines it as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, and then condemnation. The key word there is inferiority. That when I stand before God and you stand before God, based on that which has been provided for by the Christ, we stand from the same platform. Please believe this. Now, it is true that culturally speaking, if you are born by a millionaire, you are not necessarily the same, sociologically speaking, with someone who was born somewhere in the village. Are we together? There is an economic advantage. If you are born in a nation where the government, for instance, is more strategic in nation building, you already have an environment. There are nations today when you are born in, you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory. There are others when you are born in, even your neighboring country, you will need your passport stamps to just cross over because of the socio-economic disadvantage that comes with those territories. Are we together? In Christ, the same Lord is rich unto all. So when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benihim, when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires, when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God, I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Listen to me. On every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves, not arrogantly so, but truthfully so, into an understanding that I stand in a platform through Christ, that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth. Do you know what it means to be a child of God? Being a child of God is the most superior, most superior honor that any man can get on earth. The second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch. The third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level. They are, they are cadres of honor. The highest of them is to be called a child of God. Behold what manner of love 
the Father had bestowed upon us in that we are called the You know, we just say it carelessly. I'm a child of God. Donald Trump's son needs only few assignments in his life. Are we together now? Because a major part of it has been solved. Look at this, our lovely children that we just dedicated. The truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till Jesus comes. Remember we are the bridge between the old and the new. We have been that sacrifice that have, you know, labored for people. I'm a child of God. It's a powerful revelation. The monarch of the universe is my father. Let that revelation touch you. When you say God is my father, many people are used to abusing the name God. For some people, God is a bottle of minerals. For some people, God is an idol with a stone. So when you say God is my father, it doesn't carry the weight. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am So you may come from a background that has no advantage. It is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you. It is true that your heavenly, your earthly mother, or whatever it is, the disadvantage, but the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and i am his child is a revelation that you must have it instantly gives you a sense of superiority not from a negative standpoint are you getting what i'm saying now yes but you move around knowing that the earth is your estate when I travel to any region, I expect the same thing to happen, regardless of location, because I am still within the domain of my father. Now, when you travel to other parts of the world, you will do left-hand driving, others right-hand driving. When you pass through other places in the world, because of the system of government, sociologically speaking, you are mandated to do certain things. But the awareness that the earth is the Lord's, that means in reality there is no disadvantage because wherever you are located and situated within this territory it is the domain of this monarch called god are we together now very powerful so the bible says that we come boldly this is the first thing i want to establish the promises of god not just the promise of the holy spirit the promises of god that are written in scripture the promises to prosper, the promises to heal, the promises to lift, the promises to bless. Listen, the promise of influence, like God spoke to us, Genesis 17 and verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful, he said, and that kings will come out of your loins. Nations will come out of you. It's not necessarily, it's, it was to Abraham, but Galatians 3.29 says, If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual jew in christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage i pray that god will help you understand what i've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions there is nobody called by god to a life of failure bishop oedeko said every calling in christ is a high calling everybody say a high calling yes there are no low callings in christ nobody is called to a life of failure mediocrity defeat no we are called to a life of excellence we are called to a life of grace we are called to a life of influence we are called to a life where the bible says that through the church the manifold many-sided wisdom of god will be displayed to principalities and powers if you're with me please say amen 
Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seems to be very open about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19. God seems to talk to Abraham in a strange way. And the Bible records that Abraham was called the friend of God. Not many people in life are ever called the friend of God. We are reading from verse 17 down to 19. This will bless you. Look at me. He says, and the Lord said, look up please. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him abraham the friend of god it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God, but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names. The name Son of God, Child of God, is a generic name for everybody. It defines the centrality of God's love. But that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions, titles that represented certain covenants. So from that neutral standpoint, you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God. Are you getting what I'm teaching tonight? So for Abraham, he became the friend of God. And John chapter 15, please. 15 and 16. Very powerful scripture. John 15. He said, you have not chosen me. Look up. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. He's talking about fruitfulness. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Next verse. He says, these things... No, no. Go to verse 16. Oh dear. Did I miss something? Yes, 15. Let's start from 15. 15 and then 16 and 17. Henceforth, that's what I'm looking for. I call you not servants. Now, it's not an insult to be called a servant of God. A servant of God is not a slave. A servant of God is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of God. I know sometimes we say servant, I'm not a servant. If you mean that contrasting sonship, you are right. But you will understand as you grow with God that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Are we together? So to be called a servant of God is not an insult. We are bond servants. Paul uses the word bond slaves, but not unto servitude in a negative way. Henceforth, I call you not servants, okay? For the servant, now look at this. This is, oh dear, oh dear. May God open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Notice, the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information, knowledge. It says, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. It says, but I have called you friends. What is the advantage of friendship? For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. The advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge. You know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom, the truths of the kingdom. The Bible calls them the secret things of God. This one is not for everybody. Is God helping us tonight? Abraham, my friend, shall I hide this from him? Shall I hide this from him? A servant does not know. He may obey religiously without knowing. 
but a friend is privy to information. God is about to do certain things and he said, no, Abraham is my friend. This is powerful. So God calls Abraham his friend. So I can know that I am growing just from sonship into friendship by God. By the depth to which he is fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom. And you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access. It's called the hidden wisdom of God. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. They that love me and seek me early will find me. Acts chapter 13. We're still building on this. Acts chapter 13. From verse 21 to 23. Another man carves out a title for himself. Although at a level playing ground, we are all children of God, or we are all creations of God, we now see another man who went out of his way. And afterwards, Peter is speaking now. They desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. Next verse. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them, read with me, David to be their king. Uh huh. To whom also he gave testimony. Stop. Who testified? God. God is about to give a testimony that I have found David, the son of Jesse. Help me. A man after my own heart. What qualifies him to be a man after my own heart? His insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled. Now, notice how these people end their titles. Most times we just know their titles. But I'm showing you what they did. How they went far. When it has to do with the friend of God. He's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you. I give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship. When it now has to do with a man after his heart. He's saying I have discerned that this man will die doing my will. And I have given him, I've given him a title of a man after my own heart. God is testifying not a prophet. A man who pursues my heart. Not who pursues the throne. Don't forget the man is a king and yet God does not talk about his throne. He will abandon his throne to seek the heart of God. And God says, this man is a man after my heart. Why? Because of his insistence to see that my will is being done. Next verse. Of this man's seed... Had God, of this man's seed, had God, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. This is his reward. For being a man after God's heart, God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring... David was not the only man after the order of, you know, God and all of that. But he is, he is called the seed of David, thou son of David, not thou son of Rahab, not thou son of Boaz, not thou son of Naomi. They all played their roles, but out of those people, God selected one man to become, to personify his passion towards a man. Are you learning something tonight? A man after my heart, a friend of God. This is a very powerful revelation. Now, let me share with you something very, very powerful. Um, and, and, and this is where I think and I believe that many believers are not properly mentored. And as we go on break, it's important to remind and re-emphasize this. That in the dealings of God, man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy. Please listen carefully. That the systems of God work twofold. One, the dimensions that are finished from God's standpoint. And then number two, through the experience of alignment and obedience, we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. 
Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, hear what he says, Walk out your own, not your neighbor, not your child, not your wife, not your husband. Work out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling. Work out your own prosperity. Work out your own intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Work out your own, ensure that you press into God so much that he is forced to find a name for you. He calls Abraham a friend of God. He calls Jacob the one, he names it after a generation of intimacy. And he said, listen, you have a responsibility to press until, until you give him no rest, the Bible says, until he establishes Jerusalem. There is a way you can wear God out, if I can use that word, through your passion and your intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you will read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there. So we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me, be wealthy for me, be prosperous for me. And that fortitude, that participatory effort is not there. Are we together now? So many people want to know the Holy Spirit. And they think the key to knowing the Holy Spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the Holy Spirit. What you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder. A ladder that you will climb. Hello? A ladder that you what? You will climb it through your prayer. You will climb it through your relationship. You will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions God will give you. That is not for everybody, it's for only you. You are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now... We have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritism. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So, in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair fair for God to generalize his dealings with you. That from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone. This is true. It's a very powerful mystery that I show you. Work out your own salvation. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, this Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth 
when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, when his light shined upon my head, there is a light that shines upon your head. There is the one that shines upon your feet. The one that shines upon your head gives you illumination. It says there is a spirit in man. If you only have the light that shines on your feet, you will keep walking. But let me tell you the truth, you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge. Are, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. Work out your own salvation. Any ministry that grows is worked at. You know, a lot of people sometimes, respectfully, people see me and say, Wow, Apostle God is doing mighty things in your life. And I say, Yes, He is, and I, I really thank Him. And they, ah, you are anointed, though. And, you know, sometimes I'm tempted to say, I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals. And I'm tempted to say, Are they my relatives? How did that happen? You see, this, this is the question we need to ask. Ah, God has favored you. God has favored Koinonia. My brothers and my sisters, behind everything that works is somebody working it. Working it with diligence. Working it with passion. Working it with zest. Behind every business that works, it is favor. Every house is built by some man, but God is still the builder. It's a mystery. This issue of being a worker, this language, work, believers don't like it. The, men, the moment you mention work, people don't ah, why must I work? Oh dear. Genesis chapter 2, after God creates man and woman, he now comes to take clay. God, the creator who speaks and creates, used his hand, not his mouth alone. When you read chapter 1 alone, you are deceived. Because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit. You must go to chapter 2 and see God the worker, not just God the speaker. It takes more than speaking to build a destiny. Your hands must be soiled. You will put your hands down and make it happen. There are people around just looking for impartation, looking for cheap prophecy, and there is a place for those things. But it is only activated whilst you walk. Whilst you walk. Hallelujah. Many people are going to remain poor. It's not, it's not a negative prophecy. And my heart pains me while I say this. Many people are going to remain mediocre in their life. Many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of God generationally. And it is not necessarily because God decided to use others. It is your individual commitment. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. But he followed Elijah and said, I don't care what you are going to do with me. Oh, I must carry some. They were already sons of the prophet. The next prophet should come out of them. But someone said, I need, I can't, I can't die farming. I started farming, but I will follow you until something comes upon my life. We define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life I I with fear and trembling man of God sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your Bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it 
You don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched His grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. My life will change. My life will change. My life must change. My life will change. chapter 2 we we'll read from verse 4 down to 10 the verse of emphasis is verse 10 please listen my brothers and my sisters this is a message to the body of Christ we must be careful we are missing a very major key the dimension of spiritual diligence it cannot be bought there are certain wells you must dig by yourself Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Second Peter 1, for if these things be in you, look at this now, and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 9, but he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 10, wherefore the rather, he says, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is true you are called, but prove it. It is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure. It is true you are a prophet, but prove it. It is true you are an apostle, but prove it. It is true that God has raised you to be a voice, but obtain grace to prove it. Give diligence. Diligence. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the study of the word. Diligence in the sacrifice of compliance. Listen, let me tell you. Real success is not at a platter of gold at any level. Whether it is spiritual success, whether it is financial success, whether it is grace and influence. It is a sacrifice of continual press. As your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you. Is God speaking to us? This is where men are separated from boys. This is where what provides the disparity in ministry. This is what provides the disparity in business. This is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives. I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and I am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things, these people. When you see a wealthy man, all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on. When you see a man of God, you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on. When you see a great person, even politicians, it's amazing that those people don't sleep. 2 o'clock, 3 a.m., they are organizing meetings. 
There are men of God who organize vigils. They sleep by 5, 6, and by 8, they are awake to attend to programs. Whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice. It says to be diligent. Someone will have to obtain that grace today. Wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that, people are lucky. No. There are many platforms of advantage, like prophetic connections, like all of these kinds of things, but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence. Hallelujah. Diligence. This is what I've learned in my life. As I have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life, I have tried to look for what is the, 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 the impediment, what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things. But I found out that most people are not diligent. Most people are hopeful. Most people are prayerful. Most people are very futuristic. But the ability to stamp your feet and say, I will walk this thing in the name of Jesus until it works. Ministry must work. Doors must open. By the price of diligence, the labor dimension. Jesus said, my father walketh hitherto, I walk. My father walks and I walk. To the point that even seated at the right hand of the father, he's still engaged, making intercession for the saints. Many African nations, respectfully speaking, we have missed on the price of diligence, spiritual diligence, socioeconomic diligence, the diligence of mentorship, the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open. Can I be honest with you and submit to you? Next year will come and go. Year after next will come and go. Another year will come and go. A decade will come and go. Your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say, Look, I am ready to walk this thing. Thank God for prophetic words. They are not a lie. But they only work for those who walk. Prophetic word does not work for those who hear. It works for those who walk. Diligent. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out, now I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of His presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single, look up, the single most important factor that governs the dealing of God with a man is the state of your heart. The purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to working with God. Write it down. There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting, vetoes your obedience. No matter what you do with God, you are not ready to start with God until He is able to x-ray your heart. The purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with God. You have to understand this. There are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things. We do business, we fast, we pray, we do ministry. But I have discovered in my work with God and from scripture that God is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man. And I have preached many messages along this line. Please get them and listen to them. See, the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent. 
the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with God but there is something I know about God the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of God to you the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motive. If there is one secret about my life, I tell you this. And I say it before God and I say it before you. If there is one secret, it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord, if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motive. It's not just about anointing. Listen, it's not just about prosperity and influence. You know, many times when I travel and people are receiving me and the honor, the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything, and I see people admiring, and I just nod my head. I say, oh dear, oh dear. May God have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding. Because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are, we are caught up and we go and say, no, me too. I must be rich. I must be blessed. And we start fasting already your motif has cancelled everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as Savior to all. But doing the business of destiny, it has not started until that death happens. So sometimes when people come and say, Apostle, I want an impartation, I want grace. With all, it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom. But I know that I'm wasting my time. I've read books on wealth and prosperity. I've read books on church growth. I've read books on influence, territorial dominion. At a point in time, I had to appreciate the books, but I closed them. I said, Lord, there must be a secret. And that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you. The price for all of me is not all of your brain. The price for all of me is not all of your singing. The price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be... And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. You are dying to align. The death is part 24 hours. 
The moment today is gone, you start the death of tomorrow. The moment tomorrow is gone, you start the death. For every dimension of death, there is a corresponding glory. The day you are tired, God will not force you. But He will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue. Yeshua Hamashiach Kominanakane Yeshua Hamashiach Kominanakane Kominanakane Ya Yesu Yeshua Hamashiach One more time Find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out. Show me a man who has vowed to continue to die. I show you a glory that excels. Show me a people that continue to die. Our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death, it spells inconvenience, it spells discomfort, it spells going out of it. Means that sometimes God will strip you of everything you. It's a price for the glory. No matter how much impartation, it's a price for the glory. You are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus' name, stand up, I'm a member of Koinonia. You are right. But let me tell you, when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally, you will need to die generationally. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please listen very carefully. There are people that God will give you instructions empty your account there are people god will tell you 80 percent of all your wealth for the next two years keep giving it you say lord why he said because you said you want to be a kingdom financier god i said i, I thought i should have he says i want to give you a revelation of the receipt that scattered and yet increase it you are you know it as a memory verse but i'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you Lord, I want you to anoint me. Grant me the grace that speaks across territories. And he says, you really want that? Yes, God, let's go. And you start the journey. And for starters, he says, give everything you have in your life. He said, God, I didn't hear you well. Give everything you have. Your reputation, your wealth, your everything, your clothes, your honor, give it away. That is the price. It's what he told the rich man. He said, go and sell everything you have. Follow me. The man said, no, no, no. Jesus, this one is so much. Authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone. It comes by death. It comes by death. Lord, I'm trusting God for the grace for illumination, revelation. But your mind is full of many things. You must die to give it space. And when there is space, then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Remember my message. The same Lord is rich unto all. But by certain sacrifices, men have ascended this ladder and they have given, they have branded their dealings with God so that He has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as He deals with men. This is the hand of God and this is the way He works. Scattered across the body of Christ, are different individuals, different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and God has defined certain possibilities to them. There are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper. Even before you finish learning all the laws, at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised. You will know that I have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant. God has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. When you work with God at a general level, 
you will go to heaven, but you will not do much. These are not even the people Satan is looking for. Satan will come and pass you. You will call him, he will still leave you. He's looking for people. There are people he's looking for desperately. Where are these ones that want to die? Where are these ones whose life is no longer their own? Where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension? Where are these ones who want the power and the grace of God? Where are these ones who want the influence of nations? There is nothing that can be done about a man who has chosen to die. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And when a man has chosen to die, it's over. Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die, not to live. When you want to live, you are in trouble. You are only free when you are ready to die. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live is a mystery. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That whatever it will cost me to die, I will die. Not for the sake of ministry, not for the sake of money, not for the sake of titles. That prayer to search my heart, try my thoughts, is a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God. All of God, not more of God. All of God. He will, he will come more and more. But the goal is for all of Him to be transfused into you. I'm a the secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd, it's not a church, it's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death. Genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass heat and tita. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. More than Bible study. More than mentorship. More than fasting. More than prayer. More than training your skills. The real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey. A journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. I die daily. 
it is the price for carrying the anointing. It is the price for carrying grace. You can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether God keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account. You have so died is the same thing. Whether the money is in your account or is in heaven, in God's mind is the same. Because any day he makes a demand, it will go. A time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same. Because God has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established. This that I share with you is the price. When this is settled, then that's when every other thing makes sense. Your prayer life, your fasting, even your obedience to scripture. Believe me when I tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died. It's the reason why we will keep fasting, we will keep praying, we will keep quoting scripture. You see someone's car, you go and lie down on it and say, Oh God, please open my door. And you are right, it should bless you, but it will not bless you because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of heart. Yes, you are. Listen, we give, we give breaks in the ministry not just to allow us rest. It's been a busy year for everyone. But the goal is not just to rest and catch up. We are giving you one month so that it will help you die well. Die enough to carry the glory of 2020. Die enough to carry the power of 2020. Die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020. That Lord, I am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory. Dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle, the power. Dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence. At that point, the one week. Now, you are not going to go to God as a worker. You are not going to God as Apostle Joshua Selman. You are not going to God as a leader. You are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death of your ego. Say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money. Forget about the money. Keep the debt going. House Kalata. Show me that man and I show you a man to fear in this life. A man that has mastered death. I die daily, Paul said. So he got to a point where he could say for me, oh, I don't know whether it is to go or to stay. I have conquered the interface of these limitations. But for your sake, I will stay. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you've heard me say it again. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. Compared to where God is taking us, we are only starting. And we must trust God for grace to not be complacent. The secret is to turn to God and sit down and die. The applauds of men can deceive. Men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow. This one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he says, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. It will tell you for the next three days, let no food enter your mouth. There is a surgery spiritually. And even the slightest meal can interrupt it. And he said, Lord, ordinarily I will want to eat. But for the joy that is before me, let me endure the cross and even despise the shame. And in the midst of that pain, suddenly you will meet an anointing. You will meet a grace. And God will tell you this anointing is what I'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years. That means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program. And now that you have died enough, here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message 
Not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down. Not just to go gisting and wasting our time. Listen, times with God are times of death. Now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place. It's foolishness. Great men are great because they forget their crowns. Great men are great because they forget their trophies. Great men are great because they forget their achievements. Create an immunity in your room that does not hear, let you hear the, the clappings of men. While they are clapping, you are dying. The clap increases. You are still dying. And the flesh tells you, have you not attained enough? And the Spirit of God says, you lie. Not for the mantle of a nation. Keep dying. Keep dying. You will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life. And men will look at you and say, are you a human being or you are a spirit? When you go back, God will say, can we continue? You are back from the meeting. You, some of you will go home and God will give you instructions. Organize crusades. Organize little meetings. And while you are doing all of those, people will look at you and say, at this koinonia. And while they are talking, you want to come back to life and the spirit will say, no, not at this point. Keep dying. The door to life is death. The door to the throne is the cross. The door to the cross. Then the grave. You must die. It is the one key I have learned in my life. Fear a man who dies. Don't fear a man who died. Now, I beseech ye, brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable act of worship there are times that God does not want songs no there are times that God does not want prayer there are times God does not even want dancing around there are times God does not want reading any Bible there are times God just wants the sacrifice of death it will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are demons don't need your death they cannot do anything with your death it will pass them they can't cast it they can't kill it it passes straight to the throne and is received before the master and through that death the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement the signature you sign with God for the next five years Lord I am still available Lord, don't replace me with a stone. Lord, I am still there. You have options, but incorporate me in your program. Are you ready to pray? Number one, Lord, make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself. Whether it's pride, whether it is money, whether it is the flesh, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears, deaden my senses to the impulses that can distract my process of death. Lift your voice and pray. not ministry pray for yourself not your neighbor not your brother not your sister pray for yourself Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the 
haplots of men deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the flattery of men, the deception of success. Bring me to a point where I am focused in death, dying daily, dying hourly. I give you a key one more time for those who did not hold it this year you should hold it before you go home that everything only makes sense when death is in place that everything only makes sense when the flesh dies that everything only makes Die daily, die daily, die on Monday, die on Tuesday, die on Wednesday, die on Thursday, die on Friday, die on Saturday, die on Tuesday. It is not physical death, it is death to the flesh. Stay on the journey of grace and stamina, the stamina to continue, the stamina to press until you press to strange dimensions of anointing, strange dimensions of graces. Die until God swears a vow upon your life. Die until the character of the Spirit is continually formed in you. Die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray a very serious prayer. Oh God, purge my motives. Listen, purge my motivation. Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I preach? Why do I want money? Why do I want a wife? Why do I want a husband? Why do I want children? Why do I want influence? Why do I want my voice to be heard generationally? What is the intrinsic motivation? We are about to pray and let the light of God, the double-edged sword, penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Don't be ashamed what you find there. Don't be embarrassed by it. That's what his presence is for. That's what the sword is for. But lift your voice. Forge my motive. Forge my motivation. The psalmist said, Search my heart. Try my thoughts. And see if there's any evil way in me. Then he says, Lead me to the way everlasting. Koinonia prays in this final service. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the heart of a generation? Pray and cry before God. Pray. Break my pride. Pray. Break my ego. Pray. Break my reputation. Bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified. A desire to see your purpose is established. Is someone praying? Few minutes and we are done. But pray. Lekata 
Listen, hallelujah, we are rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this, happy is a man, see, you see Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much, we are very small, it is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy, that's where the word glory comes from, Kabod, Doxa, the weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven to turn a man around so that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We're going to pray the last point and we're done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, so called? The next dimension of ministry, what is the prize? The next dimension of influence, you are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. For Lord, I set my face like a flint. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program? No assumptions. No assumptions. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be featured in your program. Come 2020. I obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things. Come 2020. I remain. I obtain grace to remain your friend. To remain a man after your heart. Praise. To remain the voice. Please pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your church. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your business. Lord, what will it take to remain? What will it take to increase? What will it take to advance? What will it take?
Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know His power, but they do not know His presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to pray for the sick. But the intimacy, Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together. Please, you have to use this break to know the Holy Spirit. Thank God for ministers who continue to pray. And based on the assignment He has given in life and in death, will continue to be faithful to it. But you must trust God for intimacy. Holy Spirit, who are you? You are not just a wind. Benny Hinn said you are his friend. Catherine Kuhlman said you are her friend. I can't lie that you are my friend. Reveal yourself to me. Not for the sake of ministry. Not for the sake of prophecy. 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from Him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant. Nonsense. You must shelve those things and say, Holy Spirit, show me who you are. That Shekinah, that presence, that intimacy. Jesus walked with you. You turned Him into a sign and a wonder. Spirit of the living God. And for some of us, we have to pray and say, Holy Spirit, from where I left off, let's continue the journey. Because it was not like this. From where I left off, let's continue the journey. Pick my hands again. Turn me into a sign and a wonder. But much more than that, turn me into a friend. We are going to pray, Holy Spirit, manifest yourself. Reveal yourself to me. Lift your voice and pray. Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't purged my motif. Haven't purged my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold a hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our lives will change. We can never be the same. Not with your grace. Our lives must change. Our lives will change. Our lives will change. Our hearts must change. Father, I stand in the presence of your people and everyone who is connected to this grace and connected to this ministry all over this nation, all over the continent of Africa, and all over the world. We stand as a family in this last service. And whilst thanking you for everything you have done in 2019, we decree and declare, do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, 
reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus father I stand before your people and as a family of faith we cry the price for the relevance of 2020 the price for the revelations of 2020 the price for the signs, the wonders, the influence, the price to end your trust for 2020. Through the ministration of death, we pray in the name of Jesus, may that price be fully paid in our lives. I pray tonight and forever, search our hearts, O oh God, purify our motives and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is Christ Christ enthroned Christ glorified Christ exalted Christ revealed in the name of Jesus Christ Father I decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of Jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of Jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of Jesus I decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air I speak over you by the God of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of Jesus, I send you from this place tonight like the foxes of Samson. That you will go in the spirit and the power of Elohim. May you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness. May you go and bring life, be dispensers of life in your homes. Return back to your localities as signs and wonders. And for as many of you who God will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break, the grace to be effective, let it be released. Everybody who will be on retreat, everybody should be. And everybody who will be on retreat, I pray for you, let there be an open heavens. Accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that it leaves you now and forever Anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family. I stand by the God of heaven and I curse it now in Jesus name. I speak life to your destiny. I speak life to your family. I speak life to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that nobody connected to this ministry will be a victim of kidnappers in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God keep you from trouble he will only take you to the place of honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally before we round up let me pray over our finances a lot has happened in the nation.
and it is only responsible that I speak over our finances, especially during the Yuletide season. There are families that sadly can barely even afford something to eat. It's not enough to be waiting for welfare, for God to use somebody. God can open the heavens. There is an advantage that the prophetic provides, even at times like this. Every time there was famine and financial squalor, it was the prophetic that came to breach. And I want to speak over our finances. It matters that there are resources in our hands, especially within this time. There are some of us, um, every one of our family members will be depending on us while we are depending on God and probably others. So I need to speak into your life. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Between now and next week, by the God of heaven, let there be a manifestation of strange favor. In the name of Jesus, let very strange resources at a corporate level and as an individual level, may these resources follow you. Every financial need that will arise, the grace to solve it, I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you that the love of God the bond of perfectness I've taught you that the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge I pray for you from the depth of my heart the love of God that seals your character the love of God that seals all that you are I impart it upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another may the baptism a fresh dimension of love let it come upon you in the name of Jesus be extensions of that love to your loved ones be extensions of that love to your locality whatever it would take for you to show that love may the grace be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and worship Him. Let's lift our hands and bless Him because He is faithful. Lord, we thank You. You are worthy of praise. You are the doer of signs and wonders. Lord, we return thanks for the mighty things that You do in our midst. We say thank you for the healings, for the miracles. We say thank you for the signs, for the wonders. We say thank you for the liftings, for the transformations, for the restorations. We say thank you. Glory be to your name. 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 Be to your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the Spirit in one minute that the Spirit of Revelation will be mighty upon us even as we hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Go ahead and pray. Praise the Lord. Pray in other tongues. You are preparing your spirit to receive the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Alabarando Sada Barucos, Sita Padia. 
You are our God and we believe in you. We believe in your ability. We believe in your power. We believe in your wisdom. You are a mighty God and we are believers. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, you were sent to us as the spirit of wisdom, as the spirit of revelation. We are gathered here tonight because we are passionate about knowing you and understanding your ways, accessing your power and walking in dominion. We ask you tonight that you open our minds, open our spirits, open our eyes, give us capacity to comprehend, to understand the secrets of the kingdom. We have come again, O oh God. We declare that except you teach us, we cannot understand. Except you open up our minds, we cannot comprehend. So we cry, dear Spirit of the living God, that you prevail over us until the word of God becomes spirit and life. And I pray that the grace to manifest the realities of this truth, that that grace also be supplied us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You know, I never, I never get I never stop getting humbled by the kinds of miracles and the mighty things that we hear every time we are gathered here I want to encourage us to not get used to these things you know there's a way you can get so familiar oh is the healing again oh is the breakthrough again your heart must always be in a posture where you receive every miracle no matter how great no matter how little, with gratitude in your heart. If it could not be done by man, then he deserves the glory for it. Are we together? If it could not be done by man, then he deserves the glory for it. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to be teaching, but I really believe that... Um, I know we have a miracle service coming, but I, I just sense that as I teach tonight, there will be a grace to lift burdens from people, not just a grace for healing. I sense this right from home, that as the word of God comes, all of a sudden, just in the silence, you are seated inside or outside or following online, you find out that a grace comes upon you, prevails over you, and all of a sudden, a burden is lifted, faith is stirred up within you. You find out that one infirmity just roaming around your body just leaves, just like that. Listen, let me tell you something. John chapter 11 and verse 40 says, Jesus was speaking, he said, Did I not say unto you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? There is a relationship between your experience of the glory and your believing God. Did I not say unto you that if you believe, you will see the glory? If you believe. If you sit down doubting, wondering, oh, can God touch me? Look, the, the, we learn from scripture that there is nothing that is new under the sun. It's true. Are we together? People have been oppressed and the Lord took them out of that oppression. People have been challenged and the Lord took them out of it. Your assignment is not only to listen but to listen in faith, to listen in hope expecting. Acts chapter 4 when you read the Bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something. You can look casually just hoping that the service will run and finish but again your heart can be opened. I really believe I'm a firm believer that every experience, if God is there, 
something must happen to you. I'm not necessarily talking about falling down and manifesting physically, but you should live. Who will not want to attend a service where you are sure you will not be the same? Nobody wants to attend a service and after the grace, there literally is nothing. You should know that you have been visited. His wisdom comes. His power comes. His authority comes. Faith is built. Your conviction is strengthened. These are characteristics of the presence of God. I believe that this is what the Lord will do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's be God. Please play, play me um, the strings. The anointing is on him tonight. You guys just follow him closely. But um, I just lay down to sleep a little and then I saw him playing the string so I knew that um, just just play my no keys for me and let's trust God to do great things tonight Lord we bless you one of the all over the world this is this is the period of Easter and generally speaking once it is Easter period across the Christian community Pastors usually narrow their teachings around redemption, around the cross. Um, every man of God attempts to help the people or remind them once again of the significance of the cross, the significance of the death of Jesus, his passion and everything revolving around it. And um, as I meditated upon the things that I'll be sharing tonight, I, I just felt very strongly stirred in my heart that the Lord would want me to teach rather on um, issues that relate to taking advantage, um, validating the death of Jesus, His resurrection, using our lives. You see, as a leader, I have had the privilege of blessing people, teaching them truth and all of that. My greatest joy is to see the word produced in your own life so i can imagine that the joy that is in the heart of the father is not just that we keep commemorating periods like this but that we walk in the experience of what that death was meant for are we together now when the father looks from the throne and sees people dying of lassa fever dying being buffeted by Satan. It doesn't matter what discussion about Easter we make. It's a mockery. Hallelujah. The experience of the victory of Christ is what gives um, consolation to the heart of the Father, especially at periods like this. So I just thought to share something with us tonight that I believe will bless us. Open your heart and um, let's see what the Lord will guide us to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 Thank you Jesus Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 First Corinthians chapter two. If we can read it, it's a long reading, but Let's use Amplify. Paul began to teach something very powerful. And I want us to look.
very closely. Verse 1. He says, As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, we're using Amplified. I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men in lofty words or human philosophy and wisdom. There are 16 verses we are reading everything. For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make display of the knowledge of nothing, you know, among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now, Paul begins by saying, look, when I came, my goal was to present to you Christ crucified and then to buttress on the significance of what that should mean to your life. So he said, I have many things. What he's trying to say here is that, look, I'm a Pharisee. I'm not dull. There are many other things I can tell you. But I have limited the scope of my communication to you. To reveal Christ and Him crucified. I could tell you about all that things. But when I came to you, I have an option to teach you other things. But for some reason, my goal is to be able to present to you Christ crucified. And then to be able to help you understand the full import, the gravity of what his crucifixion can bring. Are you understanding what he's saying here now? And so he's saying, and I was, you know, fear, trembling, and so on and so forth. Verse 4. Sorry, Amplified opens it up so I will jump some things. Now, verse 4 says, And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom, but they were in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Now, don't miss the context. The context is Christ crucified. He says the theme of my communication is Christ crucified. So every other thing that follows from this explanation is predicated upon that foundation, Christ. When I came to you, my message started with Christ crucified. So every other thing that I'm going to reveal to you is connected to this foundation of Christ crucified. Are we following now? So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, human philosophy, but in the power of God. Verse 6. It says, Yet when we were among the full grown, you know, King James says that we speak this wisdom. Give us, give us King James and then we'll run to Amplify it, to see verse 6. We'll, we'll just play around with it. It says, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature. Now, so, look at his progression. The apostle starts by saying, look, ladies and gentlemen, when I came to you, I had an option to begin to teach you other things. To teach you the... The, the, to display the fruits of my intelligence. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a doctor of the law. I'm a learned colleague. But I chose to limit myself to present to you Christ crucified. And then he begins to say that I have done this because I don't want you to just brag about intelligence. I want your life to be limited to this reality alongside the blessings that come from it. Are we together now? Then he is now switching and saying, look, that we speak wisdom. So he has moved to the subject of wisdom now. Christ crucified and then wisdom. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now look very carefully. Don't assume you understand what he's saying. We speak the wisdom of God but is communicated in a mystery. Christ crucified. The foundation of my teaching. When I came to you, I came to teach you something about Easter. But I'm more concerned. I have other options, but I have noticed a lapse in your life. And there is a dimension I want you to come into at is tied to the revelation of Christ crucified alongside the benefits that come from it. And then he says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Then he says, even the hidden wisdom. Let's see what Amplified says about it. 7. Amplified. But rather, what we are setting forth is the wisdom of God. 
once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God. It says that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glory. Amplified says our glorification. Let's go back to King James. So the Bible says seven please and King James. I'm, I'm explaining something. Just walk with me media. Verse 7 and King James. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Listen carefully. It says, which God ordained for our what? So, Christ crucified. We see the cross. There is a revelation from there. And part of the benefits that come from there is an ability of the Spirit to access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom. And it says, whoever can access this, that God preserved it, that it is this formula that will be responsible for the glorification of the saints. That this hidden wisdom, whatever it is, has a part to play in our revealing the glory of God. That God himself ordained it before the foundations of the world for our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, now he connects it back again. For had they known it, they would not have crucified. So if they did not crucify, there would not be the issue of the cross and there would not be access to this hidden wisdom that has to do with our glorification. Verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. This is in context of that same wisdom. Are we together now? When you are studying scripture, make sure you keep following the line. Don't just speak a scripture and delve. He's communicating something here. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. Now we see the Holy Spirit introduced into the equation. The Bible says, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the, the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God the deep things of God. Not the things of God, the deep things of God. So he starts by saying, I came to you and I present to you Christ crucified. That if you understand the mystery of Christ crucified alongside the benefits one of the benefits if you are well taught one of the things you should be taught is that the implication of his crucifixion now has brought you to a realm where you can access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God so Christ did not just die just to give us eternal life alone yes ultimately but that there are there are certain implications of his death and one of them tied to his crucifixion are we together now is the ability to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god and the bible says that hidden wisdom was prepared by god himself that at a point in the church age man will buy a technology called a mystery Remember he said, we speak this wisdom. The goal is for you to access it. But between you and that wisdom is a mystery you must understand. It is not the wisdom that is the mystery. The mystery is the name of the technology that transfers that mystery. That wisdom from God to you. He said, we speak it in a mystery. I go to Sabo in a vehicle. The vehicle is not me. The goal is to take me to Sabo. But the means of transportation is called a vehicle. The means of accessing this wisdom, the Bible says, is a mystery. So we are going to find out what this mystery is tonight. And the Bible says, whoever finds that mystery will access the wisdom of God. And the result of that encounter is glory. Glory. That the saints in light don't just become glorified just because they want to. On account of the death of Jesus Christ, there is something that his death granted unto us. Are we together now? And the Bible says that if you find out one of those things that the death of Jesus Christ provided for you, 
the hidden wisdom of God that is accessed through a mystery. I stop because remember Paul is teaching here. And then Paul now begins to introduce the person of the Holy Spirit as the searcher of the wisdom of God. But he said, my, my point now, let's leave the Holy Spirit issue. We're coming there. What is the mystery that communicates this thing that the Bible calls the deep things? The deep things. What are they? Because whoever can access these deep things, the Bible calls them the hidden wisdom that not even the men of the world nor the princes knew. If if they had known that the goal of Jesus' death, among other things, was to grant us access to that mystery so that we will be glorified, he said they would have made sure the Lord of glory did not die. Are we together? Galatians chapter 3. We are coming back here. Galatians chapter 3. Please give us from verse 10. You will be so blessed tonight. My prayer for you is that the things you are going to learn, you will so understand them and they will produce strange victory in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause, for it is written, Cost is everyone that continueth not in the things that are written in the book of the law. Read on. Next verse, please. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. 12. It says, And the law is not of faith, but that man, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. 13. Then he says, Christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law. And he tells us how he did that. He says, being made a cause. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. We see the cross back again. Are we together now? Remember Paul said, Christ crucified. Christ crucified. That's his message. When I came to you, I looked at a lapse in your life. That the foundation to remedy that lapse is a revelation of Christ crucified and the full import of what the crucifixion does to you. But I'm choosing an aspect of it that you can access the deep things of God on the strength of this revelation of Christ crucified. And on the strength of those deep things, you can manifest glory. The Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, I've taught you, the blessing of Abraham is not cars, not money. The blessing of Abraham is not even what we call the blessing. The blessing of Abraham is what the Bible calls justification by faith. That's the blessing of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So we, like faithful Abraham, we believe God and then we are justified by believing him. That the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And notice this. He says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So all of this journey is to make sure that even when we are justified, that's not the end of it. That we get to a point where we may receive the promise of the Spirit. There is something about a technology that transfers the spirit into a man. And the Bible says it was because Christ became a curse on the cross. Are we together now? And then we believe in that substitutionary sacrifice like we call it. And the implication is that we are justified by faith. What does that mean? We are declared not guilty. We are declared blameless. Having the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is His very nature. Are we together? On account of that righteousness, the Bible now declares that the Spirit of God can come upon us. We receive the promise of the spirit through faith then it stops there Paul now is trying to explain to the people when the Holy Spirit comes what does he do when the Holy Spirit comes what is the implication if there was no cross there would not be death if there was no death there would not be burial there would not be resurrection there would not be 
exaltation justification and that meant that there would be no access to receive the life of god there would be no access to receive justification and ultimately we will not be able to access the person of the holy spirit the final journey was to make sure that every man can become a host of the spirit of god and the bible says if satan had known that that death was a string leading from one place they will make sure that the process did not even start are you getting what paul is teaching them now had they known that the whole goal was not to punish a man but to use a man like a scapegoat and transfer the spirit of god in man he said they would insist that jesus did not die are we together let's go back to our scripture first corinthians chapter 2 okay just leave us stand there but god hath revealed them to us by his spirit are you seeing now so he has revealed them to us by his spirit we have accessed that spirit and so we have capacity to receive revelation from him and then he says something interesting he says for the spirit which spirit the same spirit we have received he's telling us certain things the spirit can do and one of it is that the spirit can search all things the deep things of god now we are investigating how to arrive there the Bible tells us where the deep things are stored. We are going to see it closely. It says the deep things of God. Then he now digresses to explain something. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit. Are we together now? So we know that the only person who can access whatever it is in God is the spirit of God. You cannot receive anything from God without the Spirit helping you. Do we agree? Next verse. Now we have received. Say, I have received. It says, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Why did we receive Him? It says that we may know. That we may... Not just that we may feel spiritual that the spirit among other things is resident in us that we may know the things that are freely given did you hear the bible says god prepared certain things to be given to the saints for our glorification go back please to verse just go back to verse um, 5 now i believe from where we talk about the mystery it says okay verse 3 i think it's verse 3 um okay six 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 i think it should be six how be it thank you we speak the wisdom of god among them that are perfect the word perfect is mature yet not the wisdom of this world nor the prince of this world that come to naught verse 7 but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery so this wisdom is spoken but it is spoken in a mystery a mystery that god ordained are we together and the bible lets us know that by that mystery we can access everything that is given to us there is a spiritual system for accessing the deep things of god listen if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know from where strange and unusual songs come from if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know where strange ideas and supernatural solutions come from the bible tells you that in as a result of the death of christ that you can access the mind not just the mind of christ the mind of the father that resident there is the hidden wisdom called the deep things of god he says whoever can find it the holy spirit brings it to you but there is a mystery you must engage listen the holy spirit is many things one of what he is is a searcher but he does not just search until the mystery is engaged. There is a mystery that will engage. He no longer becomes a comforter. He no longer becomes a... He starts to search. 
there is something that can be done on earth that switches the ministry of the spirit to go to the mind of the father and start searching the deep things and bring it to you and he says if you find it your life will spell glory paul is teaching them paul looked at their lives and said no everything i see happening to you should happens to human beings i don't see you accessing realities from another realm he said let me teach you something i i wanted to teach you a lot of things but i see there is no glory in your life let's start the lecture the foundation is christ crucified that when jesus christ hung on that cross the implication of everything that happened at calvary was to the end that we be justified comma to the end that we receive the spirit because no man knows what is in the heart of the man except that spirit so the father allowed his spirit who knows what is in his heart to be domiciled in every believer but the bible says that the spirit of god is many things he's a counselor he's an advocate but there is a mystery that can be engaged that will make the spirit to live whatever he's doing and start searching the mind of the father and bring to the saints something called the deep things he said the hidden wisdom and says god prepared it for my glorification many people have taught that this mystery is just to blast in tongues and once you blast in tongues the holy spirit starts searching how many times have you prayed in tongues in your life and you have seen that you prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened but we speak this mystery when we come to those who are matured and we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery do you know what paul is saying he's saying i am when i come to mature believers i know that i cannot teach them peripheral things i have to teach them the deep things of god but when i come to them i engage this mystery and the spirit of god starts to download deep things and it is those deep things i give them when i come to those who are matured he says we speak this mis this wisdom to them but in a mystery a mystery that only the holy ghost can deliver unto men listen i show you a secret tonight that is the secret of depth eternally there's no such thing as being bankrupt you will find this you apply this in your life in your business you will come up with things that will shock men everybody will know that this one this one cannot be from the earth realm it's not the wisdom of men so you can't learn it in school it's not the wisdom of the princes of this world so no elder can advise you into it this one is only available it was taught in the mind of god himself and only the spirit can access the mind of christ but your own assignment is to find out what the mystery is the bible says anytime that mystery is engaged the holy ghost starts to search There is a spiritual system for accessing deep, hidden revelations. There is a spiritual system for accessing strategies. There are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder. It looks like there is a fountain within them. They have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age, their level, their education, their everything. This is what I want to teach you. If you have this, I can tell you happy Easter. If you don't have this, we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back and there is no glory in our lives. There is a relationship between the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ culminated in his crucifixion. It didn't start in his crucifixion. The sufferings of Christ started right from his passion at Gethsemane. I hope you know that at Gethsemane, that's where Christ became the second Adam. Because two things happened to Adam in the Garden of Eden. First, Adam lost what we call righteousness, right? The nature of God, he lost it. He still had the likeness of God, but he lost the image. The Holy Spirit, he lost. 
So if Christ were to be the second Adam, he would have to lose those two things too. Are we together now? Yes. And the only condition for Christ to lose righteousness is to become sin. And he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration. That's what the communion is. The mystery that two people become one. Ejimi and his wife now, as far as God is concerned, are one. She has her own body, he has his body, but in the realm of the spirit they are one. Whatever accesses him can access her without permission. If he agrees, she will pay for it. Because they have become one. Are we, are we together now? And the Bible says that when that communion was broken, remember, I think I've taught this many times in this place, that the reason why there were 12 men, you see, do you know why it was only men in, 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 um, in, in the upper room? That's where they had the communion. They were men because men are the carriers of the seeds. And sin is transferred through reproduction. Are we together now? Women don't carry the seeds. Women only receive the seed and give birth to another life. So the men there were standing, 12 of them in number. 12 is the number of government. So they were there. It was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now, Christ can now take up the nature of man. That's why he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have your life. So he broke himself and said, eat. And it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man. Watch this. Then he went to Gethsemane and he began to cry. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. What cup? The cup was not death. The cup was the Holy Spirit leaving him. Because the moment the Holy Spirit leaves him, he cannot be in touch with heaven again. Remember, the connect of the mind. Remember, it is the Spirit. When he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabbath Tanai, did the Father reply? Because that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross. If he was with Jesus, the nails would not enter his hands. He had to leave Jesus. That was where the cry was happening. For the first time, the Trinity would be separated. And he said, can this cup, this cup of disunion, can it pass off me? He said, but it has to happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That was the reason why when they held him from that time, everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam. You see that now? Then, when he was hung on that cross, the Bible tells us that, you know, the nails and everything, and he stood there and listen to what he said. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Jesus now went to hell. I hope you know that Jesus went to hell to fight Satan, not with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He went as man, Adam, to hell. The Holy Ghost was not there. No, it was not there at all. You see that? If the Holy Ghost was there, Jesus would not be able to go where he is going. Are we together now? And he stood there, defeated Satan, collected the keys. And then on the third day, that same spirit that had left him now came back. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says, if that same spirit dwells now today, in your mortal body it would do certain things i'm just giving us a little you know just play with our minds a little let's go back to what we are discussing he said that there is a mystery that activates the holy spirit searching the deep things of god and revealing it to us and he says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of God and to reveal them to man through the Spirit. That part of the blessings of the crucifixion of Christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the Holy Spirit to search the deep things of God and reveals to man. The mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation. 
the mystery that controls divine strategy the mystery that controls supernatural solutions the mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man the hidden mystery let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery Jesus number one write this down the first thing I want you to note is that the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom write it down the mind of God God has a mind the Bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of God even the deep things so write it down that God's mind God himself his mind is full of infinite wisdom number two whatever this mystery is we know that it is engaged by speaking write it down we're establishing something now please just help those under the anointing let's be sensitive i believe that god will be giving a lot of impartations the mystery is engaged by speaking so we know that for the activation of this mystery your mouth has a role to play now listen very carefully Number three, you see, this thing we call speaking in tongues, look at me everybody, look at me, we have missed a lot in it. Those who taught us speaking in tongues, taught us that every time you open your mouth, you are doing the same thing. Speaking in tongues has dimensions, and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve just because it looks like you are doing the same thing so you think every time you are speaking in tongues this mystery is activated by speaking there is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession there is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of god to start searching the deep things of god it's not just that because you open your mouth you are praying i'm going to guide you you will understand what i'm saying shortly It is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue. Listen. But the goal is not intercession, nor supplication. The goal is a system of reception. That speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession. There is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive. You receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery not just interceding for sinners not just praying there is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of god that every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness the holy spirit does not just come as an intercessor it's a message you are sending to the spirit that i am in need of a mystery and the holy spirit says i get the message you are saying there is a way you can pray that he knows I'm interceding for a sinner. He joins you. There is a way you can pray, but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth. That is a message to the Holy Ghost. I am stranded. I need something for my glory. And he goes and starts to search. Most of us think every time we pray in tongues, because it sounds the same, you think you are saying the same thing. those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power like okay power if you want power just pray in tongues or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior there are all kinds of dimensions the same electricity powers a keyboard the same electricity powers fan the same electricity but there is a way you can channel it there is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession it is a dimension the moment you utter it the Spirit of God goes to the mind of the Father that the end of that tongue is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying. That tongue cannot stop with you saying Amen and you go back. No way. No way. Mm -mm. You don't just pray and finish. The one you are praying, when you pray, just say thank you Jesus. Lord, I give you all the glory because you were interceding and you were building up your spirit man but that when you engage these tongues something must leave god and manifest physically you can hold it and say this is the answer i give you thanks then the secret was revealed to daniel 
a king came and said tell me my dream and the interpretation otherwise i would destroy you daniel showed us i don't know what daniel did in the night he said king there is no man that can know this thing oh he said but wait before you kill us give me time in the night when others will help that lady please in the night when all, i don't know what daniel did but all i know is that daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and daniel received this let me tell you this listen very carefully i know this because there was a prayer daniel was praying that made gabriel to come to earth not to fight but to bring a message it's in your bible he was praying a prayer many people say that no it was not a it was not just a prayer of warfare a gabriel said i am sent something about your prayer called heaven i am come with the answer understanding and the bible says this mystery god ordained it for our glory daniel was an ordinary man these saints in the bible were ordinary people it is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth what kind of men are these they want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says give me time he goes to the secret place and says king i have your answer and the king looked at him the dreamer forgot his dream the dreamer forgot his dream and someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back this one is not word of knowledge oh this is a download of a strategy word of knowledge gives you in part this one comes to give you an information imagine what that would do to your life imagine that you can tap let me tell you listen without this strategy you will never move forward in life you will get to point where you will stay grounded nothing on earth has the capacity to move you and the spirit of god just stands oh i'm born again ba, 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 ba. you can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody and the holy ghost will say if you know this is what apostle paul that guy was a dangerous guy that paul you see paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong he knew what was wrong with their spiritual life you guys are zealous you guys pray all the time but there's something you don't have let me teach you remember they were filled with the holy ghost already what he did in chapter 12 14 was to explain to them but paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things he said let me teach you you see all these mysteries i share let me show you how they come this is paul teaching now paul says i am ordinary some of the apostles knew jesus before me but i was taught this mystery and every time i engage it it was while paul was doing this that the holy ghost brought him a mystery he said church let me arrange the gifts of the spirit now in a way that will profit the body that's not normal you don't do that by education let me tell you there are things god has brought to me by these truths you see ba, when the truth of scripture comes to you from heaven you may not be able to share everything but there are truths some of this system of operating in the anointing this is how they came a visitation son this is how this thing works if you understand what i'm saying brothers and sisters the next time you go to pray many of you will have some of you have done it unconsciously that's why you see people come to testify i went to bed and i had a visitation no nobody just comes they are called they may use the face of a man they may god had mercy on you you just knew you were praying something about your prayer called heaven listen read your bible and see men who called heaven some did not get an answer some got an answer the bible calls it a mystery how could god leave men on earth without an assistance do you think god knows god does not know that you need to prosper do you think god does not know? imagine the sicknesses in this world do you not know that even the anointing most of us are stranded we don't even know how to use it effectively 
it is the Holy Ghost that comes. Look at Jesus. Jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground. He never repeated it again. A mystery that came. Look at how Joshua, it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the Bible. None of those strategies were repeated again. They happened just once. They, they, how can a man look and say, I will go over a, a Jericho seven times? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony. He had it's a, it's a true testimony. I got I got it too. He broke his I, I I don't know whether he broke his teeth or I think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something, an accident. And then something else happened to him. And the gentle I don't know what he did though. But the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's gone. Nothing just happens like that. It's not true. There is a dimension of God's glory that will never manifest in our lives. For as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificates or wisdom from age or just searching Google how to be rich, enter. How to do business, enter. How to be a good wife, enter. For as long as that's what you are doing, that's Sophia, the wisdom of men. There is a superior dimension. Most of us know it, but you think it just comes just by looking at the Bible alone. No. There is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven. There are certain things, let me tell you, God taught me about the anointing. He taught me not by saying. He taught me by imparting that knowledge. I can't teach it. Because it was not through words. It's, it's a lecture. But it came like a software. See, what makes men unusual is the mysteries that upgrade their lives. Not their skin. Not their body. When you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human, go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appear to that person or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit. Hmm. Are we together? That you can go back and look at your family and they can say what is special about the Easter. And he said, Lord, there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family. Are you not seeing the way our families are? How many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it? The deep things of God. There are pastors stranded in ministry. Look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life. It does not sound human. But because it came from the mind of God, it produces strange results. Go around the city seven times. Because it came to a man. He went round and the city collapsed. Are we blessed? I'm sharing with you a reality that I've worked in myself. Stupid things. But came. I know how to call for help from heaven. If you don't know in this wicked world, the devil will eat you up and spit out your bones. It's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit. There is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit. I need assistance. Oh God, I am stranded. Except you help from heaven, I cannot do anything. And all of a sudden, an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desired. Paul said, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. Are you getting blessed? Now let's continue. Let me show you something. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Please sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. It says, But God has revealed them to us. Listen carefully. It says, By His Spirit. For the Spirit searched all things. Yea, the deep things of God. That's why we stop, right? Now, Paul is trying to explain to them that the Holy Spirit is the searcher of these things. But now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing. And here's the limitation. Go ahead. 
he says okay we've, we've read go to verse 12 verse 12 now we have received the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we may know the things that are freely given to us 13 which things we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual 14 but the natural man now watch this this is the limitation to this experience once you are natural once you are natural he says but the natural man cannot receive these things why he says for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it is too childish for natural people to access it what is it in a dance and breakthrough what is it in an instruction and miracle alert these are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned two more verses 15 but he that is spiritual judges all things yet he is judge of no man 16 for who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him the word instruct him yes not just to direct him who had known let's let's see what amplified says amplified puts it beautifully there give us amplified for who has known or understood the mind the counsel and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge he said but we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart it's a question he was asking who yeah he says who which ordinary man knows the mind of christ that he can even instruct him he said we do not qualify to know the mind of christ but by that spirit he says we have the mind of christ we have access something that men cannot have the ability to hold the thoughts the feelings the purposes of his heart Men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know. Men rise in this kingdom. Your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is. Your life is not going to rise just by the informations. There are things in your life, the answer is not in any book on earth. There are things, there are solutions in your life that need to come that there is no other way of accessing it I show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification someone met me one time a gentleman and he said he works in the bank and he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target me too when I had that amount I said Habba where is this guy a thief where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever let me tell you there are things in your life you stand and look at this mountain you do everything you know to do it will not move at that level you stop trying you allow the spirit of god remember i told you the mind of god is a compendium of infinite wisdom i dare to tell you there is an answer to every question it just depends on who tells you the answer there is an answer the bible is full of men women people who they, do you know do you know i believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided solomon to give a thousand bond offering yes he loved the lord but that kind of thing cannot be normal it's not just no it's not just a, will you carry a thousand bond no solomon there is a formula to get what you are looking for and it directed him and he did something that was foolish and God came he said you called me he didn't say you slaughtered animal you called me I'm here Solomon what should I do for you and Solomon said so this thing works ah look at the kinds of instructions that would come you guys are not going to win no? why you are not circumcised ah what is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife I am a warrior. The angel said, you can go and fight and die like a chicken. I've told you, the force that controls this result 
is your circumcision not your sword so if you want to win circumcise everybody imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days they can't walk they can't move they say what's wrong with these people warriors they say I, a ghost came and said we can't win your knife is sharp but you are not circumcised and he said you cannot win david went and carried five stones does that make sense to you carried five stones to kill a giant when he came and stood before goliath goliath said abba david me i know i will kill you but at least respect me am i a dog is he a dog that you are chasing he didn't know that that thing was a mystery there's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels use hail stone to kill people a mystery was revealed to that young boy and he stood before goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down used his knife cut it and gave it to the birds that one experience brought him a wife he became tax free are we together his family was exempted from what and he was given great wealth and honor say the deep things of god say it again the deep things of god let me tell you this you know why i'm teaching you this because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of Jesus enter a new dimension everything will change about their lives most men of God will want you to believe that just because they prophesy everything will change there are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself that you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you get what I'm saying now I don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy and you find out that no people say I don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me I said, ah, but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working Ejimi, you were there when I told you God gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages. Is there? I came and told him, I said, God has given me the answer. No selling videos, no packaging anything. Put it online. And the Lord said, He will give it wings. That was the instruction. The hidden wisdom for our glory. Look, the blessing that the Lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of God. Brothers and sisters, imagine other things that can happen to your life. Imagine how the God can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of God. Do A, B, C, and you stand up foolishly and do it. And that's the end of it. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Listen, there are, there are families that are suffering that even welfare can help them no matter how you give to them the the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them because the need is recurrent it's not one time if they eat today there's no hope 11 people nobody is educated nobody went to school nobody can do any business they are all old brother you need something that is not in this earth this is a message of hope this is a message of hope young men listen to me if you don't access this you will never be established in your life i promise you fifty thousand per month will not establish you for life i give you a guarantee go and put your money in the bank and get five percent per annum and let me see how much in 10 years that's 50 percent and see how much that will help to build your life no. most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics
Your favor is real. I testify your favor is real. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Let me tell you this. In one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting, I went to the Lord and I prayed a simple prayer. And I went to bed. Now, these, these, these are occurrences that happen to me all the time. I, was, I woke up in the night. And usually I go to bed. There was no light. And I woke up and found out someone had on my lamp. My lamp, physically. Now, these are experiences that happen to me all the time. Opened my lamp and then I saw, no, not this book, another one opened and a biro there. I, I know because I knew the moment I see this, I know God wants to speak to me. And I just said, Lord, I'm ready to write. And one, two, three, four, God just brought something to my life. I said, that's it. God, whatever it is you have done for me, I rejoice forever. I cried for over one hour, seven days prayer and fasting. I said, my God, my God. Brothers and sisters, if your eyes is not open from heaven, you will not see. If your ears are not open from heaven, you cannot hear. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. You hear me tell you this. A man can. You hear me just prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. It's not just what I'm speaking. There is something I receive that is released through what I'm saying that creates the effect. When I say the power, it's not just because I'm anointed. Everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life. Hallelujah. I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you. That you can see this. A family that have no business buying a car. They don't know nothing about finances. They can access something. And in two weeks, all of them are on their knees. Saying, God, what is this? Where did this one come from? Listen. The Bible says it was meant for our glorification. Not our shame. God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives. We don't know his system. It's a mystery that Paul used. Think how many times they tried to kill Paul. Think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul. There is no such thing as hopelessness for any man. Once you are alive, you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you. That's why the prince of Persia fought the information, not the angel. No, don't get this to Daniel. If Daniel receives this, something will happen. Let me tell you, that fight was not Old Testament fight. That fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you. Satan will. He knows that one thing that will end. He sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. He sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation. That nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you and you just turn. And let me tell you, I can know what has entered you by the results that follow. These things, eh? Take your eyes away from physical things. When God gave me this, physical things are remote controlled. Forget all these things you desire. It's not by chasing them. There is a central control button in life, I guarantee you, that brings you these things. One of it is this physical resource. You have seen it happen in this ministry. You have seen it again and again. No man can do these things except God be with him. I'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of Christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family. We keep mocking ourselves as Christians, going everywhere. Jesus died for me. I am born again. There is nothing that symbolizes glory, not in our lives, not in the life of anybody. Every unsaved person is still unsaved. There is something you and God can do 
that will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a christian message say you don't know what happened to me just leave me quietly you just know that god has come to your family something you did call for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand it's the mystery it's not the hand so most people just think oh i will just confess just because the bible says to speak and in the name of jesus i decree and declare oh receive this and you find out nothing happens because you see it is what supports what you are saying not just the speech itself You may not know, but your results begin to show. First, you will think it's a coincidence, so you are not sure. You are even afraid of the result. But then you see that it becomes predictable. Predictable. Ah, ah. Someone blessed Sam today. In the evening, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. And you find out that, no, this, this is not so. Your little church, one member comes. Then the next thing, five people come. You see somebody who say, I'm a keyboardist. My friend is a drummer. The Lord just led us to your church. Say, no, but this can't be a coincidence. I've been in ministry for 10 years. No, there is no coincidence. Everything is intentionally calculated. Even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed. It will take something from the spirit. Listen, there are some of us here, you graduated with a third class. Let's tell ourselves the truth. If it is in this Nigeria, there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily. I'm not making you scared. There are some of us who what we have studied with all humility, what we have studied, that value is not celebrated nor needed in Nigeria. It's the truth. There are some of us, because of the tribes we come from, there are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you. There are some of us, even if you collect salary, the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira. You need to access these mysteries. Are we together? You need to access these mysteries. I will show you how. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Time will tell whether we are just talkatives or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life. That somebody will look at you and say, I know you are a villager. You say, you, you insulted me for 30 years, but I found something that in six months brought glory to my life. That you will bring the gospel to your family. You bring the, not just the gospel. You are able, you may be the last born. But this thing does not do with age. Whoever can get the Holy Spirit to bring you something from the mind of God, it will change your life. Understand this. You see all these manifestations that happen? It's not just the anointing. You see, let me tell you something. With When you catch a spiritual mystery, there is an effect of that understanding on your environment. You see that? So every time people come under that circumference, they're, even without directly receiving it, they become benefactors of that experience. It's true. If you have a vision and you see an angel now, anyone within that vicinity will benefit. There are others, that opening of that portal, insight will come to them. They were not praying. Just because you open the portal, someone will benefit from it. The prophet opened the eyes of another person. He never said, do you have faith? Do you believe? Because he could see someone's eyes open. But the natural man, the man who is scientific, the man who laughs at anything that is of God, 
the man who looks at all these things and says, look, let me tell you, I, I went to Harvard Business School. I'm a smart man. I know everything about economy. I, I went to so-so-so business school. Nothing is wrong with that. I did this and that. Look, I'm a smart gentleman. I got this and that. The Bible says those kinds of people, to them, when you are talking like this, they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say look at the rubbish that they are teaching members and another natural man will concur and say yes so they teach people to dance in church they teach people to jump like fools ah religion the opium of the masses i don't know who taught that but what i am telling you is the mystery that men have access and produce wonders with. you see if this ministry was not successful many of you think you are just talking just because of this is let me tell you something with results results strengthen your message are you hearing this now that's why for many of you no one has received your gospel results defy argument you can argue with a man but you can't argue with results a woman can be buried but when that woman is pregnant it's not water that is in her stomach it's a human being This F, you see, is like a computer game. Whoever has the control button will make nonsense of Satan in this F. There are things I have learned that have surprised me how Satan hid this thing from the church. And those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and Scientology and all of this. So the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things. They say, come. They put incisions. They do all kinds of occult groups. And then they show you something that has always been there. Always been there. You sell your soul to the devil for money. You sell your soul. But, and, it, and you know, we preachers insult people. Why sell your soul? But hunger. Was it no hunger that took Israel to Egypt? If they were satisfied, they would not go. There was hunger and they all went. Hunger is still taking men to Egypt. We must be able to find a system to make Goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to Egypt. Don't sit down and tell people, uh, why, why are you doing this? Why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job? Can you, do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job? Come, let me pray for you. Except I'm a man of God. You will get a job in two weeks. Five years she has not gotten the job. And she just says, don't mind this guy. My family is dying there. And this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain. But happy are you, brothers and sisters, that you can look at a man and enter a family. And they say, look, look at us. Sorry, we're embarrassed. There is nothing to eat. Our father is about leaving Jesus Christ. And saying that by next week he's going to go to a herbalist in the village. And he said, Daddy, give me 24 hours. Something will happen in this house. Give me 24 hours. And the man says, we're a young boy. We did all this Jesus thing those days in boys' brigade. He said, no problem. I agree with you, sir. Just allow me. And within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand I'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way jesus is still the life. truth jesus is still the life how about that my harbor is living i brought you the reality he said he gave it for our glory listen hear me church if we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of God in their life, we will lose our members to occultists. Did you hear what I said? Any pastor, any prophet, any apostle, any man of God that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of God, I guarantee you, a day will come, our young men, our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat. They must become, they will become harpalists. Our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell. We will be there jumping on stage, dispensing all kinds of things. There are things that pertain to life and godliness. Not just godliness, to life. Your child must go to school, to life. Your child can be born again and not be educated. And as a result, your child will become a slave to every other person. There are some of us, everyone in your family works for someone. They distribute them to go and be slaves. 
You are 10 in your family. Nobody can stand alone. You, go and help this uncle. Wash his car. You, Abba. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your kindness is real. I testify. Hallelujah. Look at someone like Kenny. Look at this gentleman. I, I don't mean to make him feel bad. His dad has gone to be with the Lord. His mother has gone to be with the Lord. Everybody that can help him in life has gone. He's on his own. It's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman. By the time he suffers, his sister is crying, everybody is crying, this guy will get into gambling. He will get into occultism. He will get into every kind of demonic thing. That's what we are. We are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality, the validity of what the word says. We are losing our ladies to ungodly people. We are losing our gentlemen. Our fathers are becoming herbalists, covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to Egypt. I will never preach a God who is not alive. It's a vow I made right from when God called me. I will preach a God that can be proven here and now. That He is not only the saver of souls, He is the lifter of men. He is the anointer of men. He is the revealer of secrets. I love you too much. Some of you as you are hearing me now, you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones. We have not eaten for three days. Please, if you are a man of God here, let's take people seriously. Let's not just be acting games with people's destinies. I bring you good news. There is a way out. There is a way out. There is a way out. We have orphans in this place. We have widows in this place. We have widowers in this place. It's not their fault that they could not be educated. Do you blame a child? Was it his fault? You see a woman of 60 years with her two children. There is no physical hope of any breakthrough. They are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of God. They are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us. Our job is to collect and eat. Let me tell you, God will soon start punishing us men of God who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them. After service, I can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and I will collect and go back. Who will betide me if I don't teach you the truth? It's not fair. We keep destroying people's destinies in the name of church. Look at how many young men sit down and they are asking, man of God, you are established. Me, I'm not. Show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice. But I keep telling you, you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while I am enjoying it. As I'm talking to you now, my food is ready. Some of you, you love God, but right where you are, there is no food for you to eat. How long will this continue? We say it's Easter. Jesus died. He conquered Satan. Oh, dead. Where is your sting? We mock ourselves in church. And the only people who rejoice are the men of God. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen. Gentlemen, let me teach you something. There are things you can learn. You will bring one song. One song, not ten songs. Nobody rises as a result of a full album. There is one song that comes from... There is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you. And with it, they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual. But there is one that comes from the throne. You will sit down and hear them playing it in Africa. And you will mint money as if you are a charmer. And God says, that's not the issue. I'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all. There are some of you, there's one idea that this mystery can bring. You go and meet someone and say, sir, this is it. And the person says, because of this, come. I will. Read the Bible. Look at modern history and see people's lives change. When you hear some of the songs that you song right, look at the young guys. They are not even neatly dressed. You know that this one is the grace of God upon a vessel. You ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write.
there are music artists in this nation we all know where they got their songs from it does not make sense and it has blessed them that's to tell you there is a force that is not human you listen to it you can't stop something in it draws you most of us write songs you carry a paper and a barrel and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you and you just find a scripture where will i lift up my eyes two times i will say amen i will say amen the lord be praised two times it will never never sell not in this kingdom if if listen you are laughing i'm very serious with what i'm saying if it is god's result it must come from him there are pastors that love god doing everything they were taught in bible school but it's not working because the forces that keep men down the forces that keep men down can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly as for me joshua selma i have made my choice that this is how i'm going to live my life my life is too risky to be human this the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being i must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all are we together we have doctors here if you follow the normal course the thing they are doing in shika you will never really rise because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say, Dr. David, I know you are qualified, Dr. Halima, but because you are not from my village, I sit on your destiny. I am Professor this and that. He says, all right, sir, you go back and engage this mystery and come out. And in his presence, he will sign you as you are rising. Tomorrow, he will come in the dedication of a foundation and he just say, ah, that is a, is my own. I wanted to tell you that I didn't stop rising. After all of your mockery, my God is still alive. Listen, don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what I'm saying. They may carry their 200 naira trouser and surprise you. I bring you a message of hope, brothers and sisters. This storm that rage over our families will not rage forever. There is a way out. This is that there is a way out. There is a way out. The way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery. Now sit down. Let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Pray. I'm already seeing an electric cable sparking. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Hallelujah. The overflow by the roadside. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. That overflow, overflow too now. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. The healing anointing. That's what I'm saying. The healing anointing. It will be by the Spirit. You may not be a preacher, but you are receiving it. And it will change your life. Oh, what business can lift me? Let me try this. Let me try that. And you keep crying. You access this mystery. And you are sitting down. And here it comes. And your life rises and changes. I know a woman years ago. She, she got into Coca-Cola business. And the only reason why she got into Coca-Cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me. And it was like a vision. And she saw a, like a, what they call this thing, this thing they buy, container. And she was bringing Coca-Cola from it. Immediately, she knew that this was where my prosperity was. You see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time? You are trying. You need to receive. God knows where your money is. Your money is not everywhere. It is in the place directed. Geography matters when it comes to prosperity. Isaac sowed in that land. And the woman started it. Mysteriously. Help started coming for her. And that was how this woman rose up. Do you know, when I spoke with this woman, from what I know about financial intelligence, I, I saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering. 
I think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that. But just because she was directed, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I shall not want. Hallelujah. The character of this kind of prayer, listen carefully. Let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues, the prayer language for your spiritual building, your edification, and the prayer that is for reception. Number one, when you pray this kind of prayer, listen, the kind of prayer that receives is not a prayer that is done with aggression. Your mind has to be alert. Listen carefully. I'm giving you, there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of God comes upon you. You are praying in tongues. You must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit. These tongues, these tongues you see, is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating, God allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening. As you are activating certain things, ideas are coming. It's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting. This one, you are praying, you are receiving. Something is coming from heaven for you to receive. Your mind must be alert as you pray. Your mind must be alert as you pray. It's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert. There are times you are just praying. Sometimes you are not even yourself. Five hours will pass, you don't know. Because there is a dimension. But when you are praying to activate this mystery, your mind must be alert to receive that which God is bringing. Number two, listen. Everything received must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are. Listen carefully. Spiritual things are very volatile. You can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of God to receive. Sometimes it can be a vision. That vision, you can't understand it immediately. So you find a way of preserving it. My phone is full of voices of encounters. Sometimes I'm praying and the things I'm seeing, I start recording it immediately. Because I know if this thing sleeps, it may not come back again. I, is somebody getting this now? Most of you, when these kinds of things happen, you say, no problem. Let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves. Never comes again. That was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy. You see why prophets were writers. When I'm praying, I pray with my books, my Bible is on my hand, my phone, everything. Because there are times I will need to draw. There are times I will need to quickly write. There are times I will need to record. I get up in the morning. I, I found out that sometimes writing is too slow. How many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something? Seconds. If it escapes that second. Sometimes when God is merciful to you, He will draw you to start praying. You think you are just praying. You are repeating the same thing. And there the dream comes again. Are we together? Let me tell you something. I have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years. Spiritual things are very strange. You can get one part. You need to preserve it because you will need that part. The other part will come December the next year. And then the last piece comes January. When you piece three of them together, they equate a dimensional breakthrough that your life will never recover from. So when you are praying these kinds of prayer, you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy. I'm going there. Lord, I'm going to receive. And all of a sudden you are praying. You are praying. You are alert. You are alert. There are some times in the midst of your prayer, you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts. You can't pray again. Don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack. Be silent. His voice is coming. Something is coming. Most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer. There are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere. Help them please. And you just sit down somewhere quietly. Like a zombie. You are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking. 
you see the mistake we make when we get to the place of prayer we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality we are cheating ourselves of dimensions there are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you you've not even started the prayer you are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand one day god will say remember what i told you go to your book page 75 check the last column that's the answer for what you are looking for there are times that i've gone to make reference to books things i wrote 2008 2009 i just remember i've seen this image somewhere and god says remember i go and look for the book i remember when koinonia was going to start that's when i remembered that god had revealed that thing to me 2005 I now when I was searching the book immediately I opened I saw everything revealed verbatim. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? We are going to pray. Many of us lose it. Listen to me. Every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray, don't just go and wail. Oh God, you too, you know how we are. If you don't arise, you can cry, you can do everything you want to do. But the moment you pray, do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating? You know that the last 30 minutes was warfare. The next 30 minutes is not warfare. That, that prayer, they all have their characteristics. You can know that I was praying for two hours, but the last 20 minutes of that prayer, is this one is, is a serious warfare. What is happening? You thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours there are times you go to pray you cannot even reach 20 minutes if you are not careful you will think you are backsliding it is the context of the communication of the spirit religion is a dangerous thing it will destroy your prayer life there are times i've sat down to pray from morning till evening and I'm unable to say a word. Highest worship is just praying. I want to get up. And maybe the only thing I can say in that prayer session is, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Here it comes. I'm writing. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Teach these people this. Thank you, Jesus. Your people don't understand this. Thank you, Jesus. The way to go about this is to do A, B, C, D. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, don't worry. I will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting thank you jesus they that are led by the spirit of god you see when you understand what i'm teaching you you will not only command signs and wonders your life will be a sign and a wonder we win in life by strategies if naomi never went to the farm of boaz she would never marry marriageable but no strategy if the walls of Jericho, the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate, they would have slaughtered them like chickens. Just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them. It takes strategies to win. You have dreams. Where is the strategy? When I meet pastors, they tell me their message, but they don't tell me the strategy. God said, go and raise me a people. Where do you think these people are? And how are you going to fulfill that mandate? A friend called me and he said, um, I should advise him, is it right? Wonderful friend that I love. He said, is it right for him to continue raising offering in church? I said, well, I don't have a problem with it, but go and find out how God designed the finances of your ministry to run. Go and pray and receive a strategy. Do you know the challenge with the body of Christ? We copy everything without thinking about it. We copy. If I start rolling this, um, um, what do you call it? My trousers are now here. I do it for two weeks. As foolish as it is. Of course, I know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the Lord upon me. You will be surprised how somebody will go for a lecture with trousers rolled like that. He will never ask and say, sorry, is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are, your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this? We copy everything and sometimes to our detriment. Are we blessed? I want you to get results. 
you have to be at alert you have to be focused you have to be discerning one of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it there is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit this eye is not just for looking you can write these things house rent god what is the way out are we together now ministry is not growing i'm trusting you for the healing anointing i've read everything i know what is the way out you are walking around and you just allow the holy spirit to pray through you all of a sudden you will just get an idea go down to zaria see apostle let him lay hands on you you see you think that that thing just came there is no other man of god you will meet no matter how anointed that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel sometimes it may not even be to see a man of god there are graces when i wanted god led me to specific people and places i remember i've shared some of them with you we just do things at random no divine direction hallelujah i will never forget one day i was asking god a very serious question about ministry and all of a sudden literally as if as if a force came my hands were shaking and before you knew it i still don't know the name that i typed a youtube video enter and all of a sudden one old old gray baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message and i listened to it that message changed my life i searched for other videos the, the message did not even finish but it contained my answer hallelujah are you blessed you have to learn this if you must rise there are two ways to rise in life hustle if you want to keep moving around and knocking or go to God and say my God show me the way show me the way God can help men oh. koinonia hear me my God can help men this trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much. Sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again. So the key is to be circumspect. Access the deep things of God. If you are naming tonight's message is, is titled Accessing the Deep Things of God. I'm giving you a secret. This is what I do with my life. Lord, I thank you. Sometimes a scripture is coming. Sometimes the voice of God comes for you. Sometimes a mystery comes. Sometimes an instruction comes. You see that? God can give you all kinds of foolish instructions. Let me tell you. Do you know there was a day? I do this every once in a while, but there was a day God instructed me. I was just lying down. I, I wasn't asleep and I was praying. And all of a sudden I just sensed the anointing. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God told me, stand up and lie down flat on the ground. Like, get up from your bed oh, and lie. Imagine if somebody opened my door. He said, this is it. I've, I've, I've always known that this guy, there is something occultic he's doing. And you would think as I lie down, I will feel one ghost. I saw nothing. I had nothing. I lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes. Honestly speaking, I even started sleeping small. And later the voice just came, go to bed, go and sleep. The next meeting that we went, I can't remember where, I saw a dimension of the grace of God that I couldn't understand. I said, what happened? And God told me, while you were lying down, your, something was happening to you. You don't have to feel it, you believe it. God is not a fool. This is how some of you can be there. Lord, who is going to be my helper? And God says, come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes. The natural man. Lord, what? I'm, I'm educated. And you stand there. 10 minutes. Somebody passes and says, ah, promise, are you alright? He says, ah, I'm fine. Of course, you can't tell them it's God that is making you a fool like that. And all of a sudden, sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen and you just feel disappointed and you go back and say God this is what you did God is watching your aptness to obey him 
one day you will be sleeping in the night and by 2 a.m god will say call pastor alpha just call and tell him what is the message ah god how do i call a married man by 2 a.m god will say do it immediately you call he say i was just about to call you here is the message for you the place is uyo not lagos that's all i saw in my dream look believers you need to be dynamic when you are just straightforward and religious there is no breakthrough the operations of the spirit is like the wind you can't tell where it's coming or where it's going so is one who is led of the spirit there are people here who came from lagos because they were praying lord what do i do with my life and god says stand up come to zaria they can't tell you exactly why they are here. That's why when you ask them those questions, it's difficult for them to answer. They don't want to look like they are stupid. Sometimes they themselves think they are stupid. But keep watching God. There is a mystery working out. Then you will see the glory and the beauty. Why will God tell you to leave Lagos? This gentleman left Ghana and came. Help that lady. I said Lagos and truly, truly, she fell under the anointing. Praise God. Someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in Portacot. And God says, stand up and go and do two weeks in Zamfara. Another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying. Whereas his money is in Sokoto. As dry and harsh as the weather is. Your prosperity is where the voice of God is for you. Not in greener pastures is not a location. Greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the Spirit directs you. There are people, any other place you go, you will not prosper. You will prosper in Zaria. Someone will come in Zaria and be wondering, what is in this place? The only thing I saw was just a few shops here, but a direction for you. Every lifting in this ministry and every greatness God has brought happened right here because we could access these mysteries. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray. Sit down. You are not going to stand up. Sit down. Listen. You are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly. And then I just want you to pray. Don't shout and mm -mm, just take out time. You just pray in the spirit. Right? Take out time and pray in the spirit. And you will be surprised to be sensitive to what God will be doing. For some as you are praying, what you will be receiving is impartation. Some as you are praying, you will not even know what is happening to you. Not every information must be communicated in words. Some truths are imparted. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about those shouting. Pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside, you just pray. Show us the secrets of our life, oh God. Show us the way out. Let it come from heaven. Some of you are receiving things. Just because your mind is not understanding it, you watch and see what happens to you. A few days from now, what you have received will start being revealed to you. And you will see that this is what happened in Koinonia. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. 
Lord, what is the way out for my business? What is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not growing? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O oh God. Just pray, Koinonia. We are soaking in the glory. Everyone pray in the spirit. Lord, why is my CGPA refusing to rise? What must I do? I have studied. I have done my best. ahead pray Lord what do I need to do where is my finances oh God where is it where is the key to the next level what is the formula for my establishment Lord how will you bail my family out do I just meet anybody should I meet a particular helper if yes what is the name who is the helper is he in Zaria is she in Zaria? Do I need to go out of Zaria? Lord, what is the thing? Is my ministry in Zaria? Is it in Nigeria? Where is it? Where is my breakthrough? Pray! Show me the secrets of my destiny. Go ahead. We are not wasting our time. I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man. The natural man. Some of you in the silence. Like the view of Hammond. Ideas begin to come. That poultry is my will for you. Don't stop it. That public speaking. You are about to give up. But it is where your finances is. Don't stop. It looks like your church is not growing. But you are called. You just need an upgrade of the anointing answers coming from heaven spirit of the lord we ask you search for us the deep things search the mind of god concerning our destinies concerning our families concerning our ministries concerning our homes <laughs> Lord, where will this budget money come from? There is no human way it is going to come. But I know that thou art the fountain of wisdom. It is in your light that we see life. Show me. Show me. Open my eyes. I am tired of doing what everybody is doing. I'm tired of failing like everyone. I'm tired of saying yes to just anybody. Open my eyes. Show me. Pray Just three or four more minutes Lord where is the anointing Where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer Is it my room or do I need to go out of my house every night What is the timing what is my time of receiving revelation from you? Is there a unique time you want to give me? From 12 to 2 every day. Is it a time you are giving me? It may not be so for everybody. But what time have you allocated for my visitation? Do I need to fast once every day? Do I need to go on a drive fast? What do I need to do? Do I need to dance for 7 days? Show me oh God. There has to be a way out. Why are my heavens closed? Why do I fast and pray and yet nothing happens? Why are the nine graduates in my family jobless? Show me. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Two more minutes, go ahead and pray. Open my mind, open my mind, open my mind. There is a way out. 
There is a way to the wealthy place. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to influence. There is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom. There is a path which no foul knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not trodden there. Show me, O oh God, this mystery paths in the spirit, these virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread. Open my eyes, O oh God, like a two-edged sword, and let me see the path here marked for my destiny. The Lord in Madonna, 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 Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna, hello, Kim Madonna. Just be silent, everyone. Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and hear. Be still and enter. Be still and you will know. Just be silent for two or three minutes. God is doing something in your life. Answers coming as words, as impartations. Be still. Some of you, God will be saying, don't waste your time in that direction. That's not the path for your life. Don't waste your time. Be still. Some of you, God will be telling you the change will not come in one day. Just be patient. I will visit your family, but it will take time. Please be patient. Just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done. Be patient. Answers are coming. Think on your business while you are standing. Think on your family while you are standing. Think on your ministry while you are standing. Answers are coming from the throne. Coming from the throne. God is telling you, I will raise help for you. It will not be with your resources that you will make this happen. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. This sickness is not unto death. This sickness is not unto death. I will give thee help and cure. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will. It is true that the healing for you. The ministry, the healing ministry, you will walk in it. It is true that the healing ministry is. Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 Shalaka to grande celebaria kaka propusina. In the 
name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the message of God that the same way God sends me inside by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take to not only hear his voice, but receive of the impulses from the throne, I make this happen for you now. In the name of Jesus, I make this happen for you now. Whatever position your ears must take in the spirit, your eyes must take in the spirit to clear up the blurry vision, to make sure that the speakings are clear. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the grace, the spirit of grace, make this happen for you even in this instant. Supernatural ideas, innovative ideas, supernatural strategies, the strategies that force things to work. Some of you, this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom. This week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you, happening by the Spirit of God, manifesting by the finger of God. You will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work. It was not supposed to work, but because it came by His voice, you will see it rise. I say to you, you will see it rise. I speak to you that you will see it rise. Before the miracle service on Friday, some of you will only come for thanksgiving. Because before then, that which you have received from heaven will walk like fire. Will walk like fire. Listen, there are some of you, the next meeting you will go for as a man of God, you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. You will go for your meetings and God will give you epochal revelations. You will command the realm of the Spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of. And that one experience will open the doors of finances, open the doors of ministry, increase membership, bring increase for you. Listen, there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry. You hear me as I speak. I don't just talk about money just because, no, 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 no. There is a reign, R-A-I-N, of a dimension. I have seen this thing many times in my visions. A dimension. All these miracle alerts are just messages. Do you know why? Because God wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve Him. There is a dimension. I want you to write it. Write it down. That there is a dimension. Brothers and sisters, you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you. I know this by the Spirit. One of the impartations that we are coming to receive on Friday is this grace for financial exploits. Please believe it. I'm not apologetic about it because we need it. Your Heavenly Father knows. There are families that must come to just cry and say, God, if you leave us to ourselves, we may not reach the end of this year. I'm rounding up. A precious woman one wonderful kaduna family that i love so much they left to church this morning while service was going on in this area thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor you can imagine people now leave and go for work they went to church they were praying whereas robbers buckled their house packed everything that can be carried Pits, whatever I, I mean carried them um, I don't know they didn't give me the details of what they carried they entered came and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of Satan let me tell you this 
a spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry and everyone connected from this grace you are totally exempted from this financial wickedness it's no longer poverty it's warfare there is a spirit behind it to make sure believers are rubbish to become nonsense to make sure pastors become beggars to make sure nothing is discussed in church again no salvation message only money message to make sure that people never rise that the only thing that happens in church is money and raising seeds the spirit of poverty please i want you to come on friday with your heart open while praying for the sick but some of this let's trust god to make this thing happen in our lives but you mark my word koinonia what is about to happen to men and women god has seen your heart you will see the sudden liftings of men by divine strategies i saw it in that vision people helping themselves and it's like a chain reaction within a short period of time rising in a way that is enviable he made this for our glory father we give you praise tonight we respect your authority in this house we respect what you are doing we take you seriously and we believe you thank you oh god for showing us tonight a system for accessing the deep things of god i pray oh god that you will grant us grace that as we pray this prayer we receive deep things from the kingdom and that grace be supplied to walk in the instructions thereof Lord, I am asking you to lift everyone. Lift everyone connected to this vision. First, lift us spiritually, O oh God. Let no one be weak in this place. Let no one be small in this place. O oh God, let your sons and daughters be men and women of fire and insight. And then I pray, O oh God, that the things that pertain unto life, you will give us. The thing, the issues of life, may they be solved once and for all, that we may have the time to serve you and declare your praises to the nations. We thank you. We receive it by faith. And we declare that this is our experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. Apostle, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Keep standing, everybody. I love him with all my heart. But seeing what he has done tonight, it is a call for me to run to him you're here inside outside overflow one two three by the roadside online you are saying man of god i want to run to jesus i have seen that this is the way i want my life to be or you are here you are saying apostle i've handed my life to jesus but i want to rededicate my life i want to take him seriously because he is my life wherever you are please make sure you run here Overflow outside, overflow one and two. You can come in, join those inside. Overflow three, for time's sake, just walk to your projector stand. Please do this quickly, wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your courage, my brother. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. I see you coming. Make sure you don't sit back. I love you, Jesus. Keep coming, quickly. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that i love you more than anything are you coming please make your way very quickly i love you jesus appreciate them as they come i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything one more time. I believe somebody still needs to come and join them. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Those in front and those at Overflow 3 and those online, all of you, please say this after me. Come join them, darling. Quickly. Say, Lord Jesus. Say from the depth of your heart, say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. 
that you are the son of God. I believe you love me. I believe you gave your heart, your life to set me free. Tonight, I receive of your life. I receive righteousness. I receive all that you have done for me. And I declare that I am a child of God. The life of God is in my spirit. I declare that you are my Lord now and forever. I declare that the spirit of the living God comes into my life tonight and he's with me forever. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pray for you, Father. Thank you for these precious people. They have come in honor of the call that you have made over their lives and destinies. Lord, preserve them. Validate this declaration that they have made by faith by granting them access to the spirit of truth. The one who can search the mind of the Father. I pray that you make their lives beautiful. Produce the garden of Eden out of every wilderness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now thank you so much gentlemen. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you please go ahead. Follow him. Appreciate them as they do so. Same thing for those at Overflow 3. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, just give me a few minutes. Three, five minutes and we're done. This is your first time worshipping with us. Aside from those going out. Your first time here at Koinonia. Um, it's a special service. We're doing it on Sunday. Usually our services are Fridays. But um, aside from Overflow 3, if you're here, Overflow 1, 2, and inside, you're most welcome. Please make your way to the front. It's my joy and honor to welcome you very personally. Please appreciate all those worshiping with us for the first time. God bless you. God bless you. Come boldly. Come boldly. Make your way. Please clear the way for them outside those who are coming. Some of you have come from very, very far. Some of you have come from within town. You are most welcome. All those following us online, in whatever nation of the world, whatever time zone it is there, we love you. We bless the Lord for your life. Thank you so much for connecting with us. The same grace at work here will work in your life. Let's honor them one more time, everyone. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.